if there was one thing that I think would be totally obvious about what's going to happen next following all these riots, it's that people want security. It is a basic necessity for people in their lives. I remember reading about civil war and revolution when it, when it was coming to the Arab Spring. And one of the things I read, it was like, there's a few things that people need. They need general health, they need food, and they need security. I don't remember if, it was, if that was exactly what they were saying. But they said that if you take one of those things away, you will get riots, you will get revolution because people need those things. They need to know that they have food to eat, otherwise they panic. They need to know that they are, uh, uh, you know, their, their health exists. They're not in, a, in, in, in like they're not bleeding out. They're not sick. They're not dying. And they need to know this can be maintained. Or maybe it was shelter. I think it was shelter, food and security. Security means you feel safe. When you don't feel safe, you start to get anxiety. Now, one of the biggest problems we have with the woke crowd is that they don't feel safe ever. Everything is a threat to them. And so they're getting anxious and going nuts. That is kind of a, a hollow revolution, in my opinion. But take a look at this story. More businesses fearing property damage hire private security guards in the wake of protests. Surprise, surprise. You want to abolish the police? I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. These people are going to hire private security tenfold. The funny thing is, people are joking, jokingly now saying that Antifa Stan may, may breed Ancapistan, you know, anarcho-capitalists, because the Ancaps and the Libertarians, the anarcho-right, whatever, have, have consistently said private security over police. And now people are hiring private security because they don't feel like the police are going to be good enough. But more importantly, the left is calling for abolishing the police. Go ahead and do it. I'll tell you what comes next. This, it's right here in front of your face. The rich people will have private security guarding their cars and their trucks and their homes, and the poor people will be, will be left wanting. But maybe that's the point. When I was reading, I, 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 so I don't know exactly what the three components were, but I think it was like food, shelter, security, or whatever. Security was definitely one of them. If the protesters abolish the police, and now the regular people are without security, guess what? Revolution, right? Is that what they're trying to foment? Probably. They want this to happen, I guess. And I'll tell you what, man. You get rid of the police. Here's what happens. There's been memes about this. The police are gone. People start hiring private security. Eventually, the, the, the left wing activists demand that, you know, that we, we have security for all. It's not fair that only the rich people can have security. We all deserve it. And then they nationalize the private security, creating the police department. Congratulations. You've invented the police. I think it's absolutely silly. These people are claiming that, you know, in Seattle, they say the police precinct is now property of the Seattle people. It's like it always was, dude. It was never property of a foreign government or a corporation. It's paid for by your tax dollars. You vote. You can complain. Now, the problem is there are too many people and no one is, is I guess, there needs to be more oversight and reform, perhaps be the better solution. There's no real way uh, uh, to effectively deal with how these police, you know, uh, function when they when they when they break the rules. There, there are in there, there is internal affairs. There are compliance. But let me tell you, man, look, I'll, I got to be honest with you. In the big cities, these problems exist. And it's bred and, 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 and pushed by these Democratic politicians because it, it may not, you know, Republicans may not solve it, but I don't think they've had a chance. So maybe there needs to be some kind of competition to force these police departments to do a better job, at least as, 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 uh, as far as the people see it. But I've also wondered if private security actually is the appropriate response. One of the things I've heard that we could do is a voucher system for police. Imagine there are a bunch of different private security bureaus and you could provide a, you know, the government gives everyone a voucher based on proportional taxes. So people who are rich pay more, but everybody gets a voucher from the government that way even poor people are granted access to security. But you choose which department you think does a better job. I think there are some real problems there in that if you're a customer of a department, they might not want to ticket you. But maybe there's another conversation to be had about not having cops issue tickets to people. Now, I think about it. What if we had a civil guard and we then had police? Think about it this way. If there's a violent crime happening, you don't call the civil guard. They don't do that. What the civil guard would do is hand out citations for parking violations and for speeding, and they would be a separate department from the actual police. Maybe separating that makes the most sense because then the police only have to enter, you know, dangerous circumstances uh, and they don't have to enter these tedious, you know, fine related circumstances. And, and, and let me try and wrap this idea together. Let's say this, the, the, the police departments 
you could have a voucher for. Or actually, at this point, maybe you don't even need it. If the police only dealt with the worst of the worst case scenarios, you'd have a lot less negative interactions and negative potential. And then people can take it up with the civil guard who can be easily replaced because these are people who are not equipped with lethal force. Somebody who's doing traffic control, somebody who's, do, who's like a meter maid, somebody who is uh, giving out speeding tickets, they don't need to be cops. Speeding tickets, maybe, but think about it this way too. If the person doing speeding tickets can't arrest you, then will the people in the cars be jumpy and scared the cop's going to shoot them or arrest them? No, they're going to get a ticket and that's all they're going to think. If the cops, pull, the cops will still pull people over, right? If they're serving warrants and stuff. Anyway, look, I, I don't know. Here's the main point. I'm not going to start theorizing about how we solve the police problem. I'm just going to say straight up, there it is. There's the story. I don't think I need to read too much into what the story is. Private security is on the rise all over the place because people were destroying buildings and people don't like it. The average person doesn't like it. They're going to hire private police forces. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe that's the competition that we need to make sure the police do a better job. Maybe it's actually the competition we need to reduce the amount of negative police interactions. I don't necessarily know how we, we solve for this, but I will tell you, private, you're going to breed more private police when you move to abolish public because there will always be some kind of police. These people don't realize they're not going to enjoy what comes next if they do abolish the police. First of all, I think most Americans recognize the problems that will arise if they do, and that's why they oppose it. But these activists who showed up to the Chaz probably didn't realize that the power vacuum would be filled in seconds. And it was by that dude Raz who went around assaulting people and did whatever he wanted. Guess what? Now you're going to need some kind of security to protect you from the guy who claims to be in charge. You're going to need money. So what do we do? Do we, do we abolish the police and give everyone their tax money back? Think about it this way. If you reduce taxes on everybody, you abolish the police. Then you say, OK, whatever money we used to give to the police, we now you don't pay. Rich people will make the most in that return. They'll then use that to easily hire private security. And guess what? Let me, let me, let me break it down for you. The way taxes work across the country is they're, for the most part, progressive. Not always, but typically. Let's say a rich person play, you know, is paying 3% and a poor person is paying you know, 0.3%. So the rich person gets back a disproportionate amount of tax revenue. He only needs you know, 100 bucks an hour for the security he wants, and he's making way more back in those, lo- in those saved taxes. The poor person also would need $100 an hour for adequate security, but they're only getting back like a dollar or two. So the rich people will have high tiered, awesome private security doing what they want, and the poor people will be left wanting. But we can't have it, man. Businesses are already, you know, small businesses already have really low margins. I doubt that many of these businesses could afford to have legit, good private security 24 seven. They probably can't. A lot of people, I guess, on the left don't realize these business owners who, who pay a minimum wage, minimum wage are not like super rich landlords, fat cats in tuxedos with monocles. I think that's what they, they assume. One of the biggest problems the left faces is that they assume everything capitalistic is, and every, all of their problems, uh, all, everything they're seeing they think is just a city. The city with their big businesses and their big chains, Amazon stores, and the police with their problems of police brutality. They don't realize that most of the businesses are small businesses, that most of the people who run these businesses make maybe like $40,000 a year and can't afford to just increase the minimum wage for all of their staff members because then they couldn't hire anybody and they couldn't pay themselves. They don't get it. What they don't understand is that when they complain about police brutality, they're talking about their cities. They don't understand when they talk about raising you know, base pay for you know, low-skilled workers that you're talking about destroying small businesses. This is the problem we have with the policy they tried to enact when they tried to enact a one size fits all policy. In the end, what I, I think, you know, look, I'm not a big fan of private policing. I'm not a, an ANCAP. I'm not a laissez faire capitalist. I don't think we would be better off with a bunch of different policing companies moving around. I know I mentioned the voucher idea, it's just an idea. But I think maybe you've got, we, there's, there's some other reforms that we need to enact. Otherwise, you will have private security guards, and I have seen them break the law. 100%. There, there have been high profile people. They hire top tier private security that straight up tell cops to back off because they're, they're better paid and they're better armed and the cops can't do anything about it. Do we want to create a larger wealth gap and two tiered system? That's what the left is advocating for. 
So let me let me just put it this way. The past three segments I've done have kind of followed a theme. What happens when the left doesn't pay attention to what they're actually calling for? They make everything they claim to be fighting much, much worse. Private security may be fine. I, I, I can't tell you because uh, I don't know. But I think, it, you know, maybe one of the problems is that it's just too good. Maybe we've solved so much of our problems that the only things we have left are, you know, just to continually find something to be angry about. Maybe when it comes to police, there will always be a margin of error, right? That no matter how, how you try and reform the cops, people will lose their lives. And then people will complain about it and they'll protest. And there won't ever be a circumstance where there is no police related deaths. If that's the case, then this constant call for reform is just going to destroy a system when we finally got it as good as we can get it. Well, they're going to change it. It's going to come and go in waves. And uh, I don't know. But can anyone be, uh, is anyone really surprised that the police, that, that uh, you know, when they call to abolish the police, private security guards find new work? I'll leave it there. Next segment will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you all next time.